there and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. And today I'll be giving you my first impressions on the Desi Skin Clairol KC Vitamin C Serum, as well as a light breakdown of some of the ingredients in this product and my thoughts on the marketing terms and marketing phrases that were used to sell this product. The product just launched on the 8th, so I can't give you a full review, but I will be doing a full review at a later date. So when I first heard that Desi Perkins was launching a skincare line, I was very nervous for what this product was gonna be, what kind of product was gonna be put out, as well as the marketing that was gonna go into this because I tried to caution about marketing in regards to overhyped ingredients, our demonizing safe ingredients. So then we learned this was gonna be a vitamin C serum. So that is where we're gonna get into vitamin C. There are studied benefits of vitamin C in terms of it aiding with collagen synthesis. Collagen is very important to your skin and your skin aging process. It helps prevent free radical damage. It is an antioxidant and it has also been shown to help with hyperpigmentation. There is a downside, the main form of vitamin C, ascorbic acid, is known to not be very stable when put into solution, especially aqueous solution, water-based solution. So if it's unstable, it will degrade over time and then you will have less of it in your product and therefore that will make vitamin C less effective. Some things affect it more than others, for instance, being exposed to air, being exposed to light can make vitamin C degrade quicker. There are some workarounds to try to make a vitamin C product retain that vitamin C component better. So you can use derivatives. These derivatives have that ascorbate molecule, which is the active part of ascorbic acid. So some of the problems with these derivatives is although they are more stable, the ascorbate part of the molecule is very stable and therefore it may not react with the skin as ascorbic acid on its own would do. Vitamin C is also more stable at lower pH, but again with a skincare product, that may not be the best because then you're gonna start having a more acidic product and that could lead to skin irritation. So that's also something that's not the most ideal way to go about this. And you can also encapsulate the vitamin C as well. That's another option. Part of the sentiment by a lot of people and the concern is that by the time you even get it to you, you're not gonna have enough vitamin C left in the product to even have an effect on you. So we're gonna look at some stability data. This was actually shared by Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science. And this is from the patent from SkinCeuticals. This particular formula had vitamin C stabilized by ferulic acid and vitamin E. That is a very common way to stabilize it. So the way that they conducted this study was they held this product at 45 degrees Celsius, which I think is like 130 Fahrenheit. So this is what we would call an accelerated stability study. And this time period, these four weeks at 45 degrees Celsius, this equates to about a year of this product being unopened at normal conditions. We're not gonna look at the 20% one right now. We'll look at 15% since that's the closest to the Desi skincare line. Right, so this 15% for the first and the second trial were reduced to about 84 to 86% of the original vitamin C content. The third study at 15% showed it falling between 88 and 90% of the original vitamin C content. So if this were a pharmaceutical product and we called the vitamin C the active, if it falls below 90%, you're falling out of the active range essentially. And that duration would have to be for the entirety of the lifespan of this product. In my opinion, that is a significant amount that's degraded, but because this is still above 10% vitamin C on the skin has been shown to still have these beneficial effects, then this wouldn't be a huge deal. But this study also doesn't take into account exposing it to light, exposing it to air. These kind of factors would actually cause it to degrade faster. So this number might be lower as you're using it. So while it shouldn't degrade before it gets to you, Throughout your use, depending on how quickly you use it up, it can degrade more rapidly through repeated exposure to the elements. And the study is also only relevant to this product. A different product using different types of vitamin C, using different stabilizers, could have a different stability data to it. So it would be nice if some of these companies who are touting this vitamin C would do these kind of stability studies and share these kind of results. So this issue of stability is why I've been so skeptical of vitamin C serums. 
vitamin C serums are very expensive. Even this one is more on the lower high end, if you will. And it, it is a product that you have to use fairly quickly for the reasons I stated earlier. So this isn't like an AHA or something that I can use a few times a week and get some benefits. I have to use this product frequently because otherwise it'll start to degrade. So this has to be something I can regularly incorporate into my routine. Even the date on this one says six months after opening, which is pretty quick. And I only really did buy this because it is Desi's brand. So I'm trying to go into this with an open mind and actually see what this can do for my skin. So there are three variants of ascorbic acid in here. So if the first one is just straight up ascorbic acid. This one seems kind of low in this formula. I'm going to guess around like the one to like 3% mark is what I'm going to make an estimate about where this ascorbic acid falls. And this and glutathione are conjugated to gold sub microparticles. These are supposed to help skin penetration. I'll have to look into that more. We can go into that in my full review if that's something you're interested in. So this is probably the lowest concentrated variety of vitamin C in this formula. The next highest one is tetrahexyldesyl ascorbate. And this is an oil soluble form. So this will dissolve into the oil phase. It being in the oil phase helps it helps it penetrate into the skin better. This particular derivative, I'm going to guess is around the four to 6%. It does based on where it falls on the ingredients list. But also the final form of vitamin C in this is ethyl ascorbic acid. And this one she does state falls at 8%. So we know the concentration of this particular one. One thing they did put on the website was that it had 99% purity. 99% is it irrelevant in this case unless that one percent was something harmful you're putting it into a formula anyway so whether it was kind of like a blend of ingredients or on its own the same concentration is still going into the product if that makes sense to, so that's something to note that's a marketing tactic so the 99 percent purity doesn't really mean much to me so desi did state in her video that she made about this product that at two percent this ethyl ascorbic acid was effective and in this formula it is at 8%. That is how I came to that 8% number. This study, if this is the one that she is referencing, this is my best guess at the one she's referencing, was a skin lightening test. So this is gonna show its effects on hyperpigmentation. They applied it twice a day for 28 days. This particular study did show skin lightening effects or skin brightening or hyperpigmentation reducing type of effects that you were actually able to see with the naked eye. There are some caveats of the study. So it was done on 20 females. So it was a small group of females and they're aged 25 to 40. And all of them were of Asian descent and they were of skin type three. From what I can find, this is called the Fitzpatrick skin type scale. And these people have fair to beige skin tones, well as lighter colored eyes and dark blonde or light brown hair color. So this study was performed on people who have lighter skin tones. So the results of someone who has a darker skin tone may not be the same as the results that were achieved in this study at 2% concentration. If it wasn't this study that Desi was talking about, then I would ask to have the study that is being referenced cited in her description in the video that she talked about it. So that way, customers can look at the study for themselves and decide if these conclusions are sufficient to them. So packaging, like I said, can have a big effect on the stability of the vitamin C. The packaging of this vitamin C serum from Desi Skin is probably one of the better ones you can get. The bottle is opaque. You can't see through it. That is a very big factor. Light severely affects vitamin C. And also this product has a pump. So having a pump is also good because those little droppers, every time you expose them to air, you take it in and out, is going to make the vitamin C degrade faster. So the packaging was designed very well in order to support the stability of the vitamin C. So one quick tip that they also mentioned on the Desi Skin website, the typical way that this product should look is a pale white to a very pale yellow. If it starts going into a deeper yellow color, that means the product is oxidated and while it 
could possibly still be safe from your skin, I probably wouldn't use it after that point because the vitamin C has degraded enough to where it has turned the product a different color. So aside from vitamin C, there are two other highlighted ingredients in here. One is green plum and the other is what she calls the Desi Youth Juice, which is a combination of extracts that are supposed to help the skin and she claims that all of these are at active levels. Now, I'll probably deep dive into this further in my full review, but right off the bat, my initial first impression is, although these are claimed to be active levels, is this gonna do more for your skin than the vitamin C? Probably not. That's just my feelings about it. Them being in this formula isn't a bad thing. We can't even really tell what level these are at. There was a very sneaky thing that they did with the ingredients list, so for ingredients list, Ingredients have to be listed from highest concentration to lowest concentration until you hit the 1% mark. At 1% or below, you can list in any order. It doesn't matter what the concentration is. So usually a good way to find where the 1% line, a guaranteed 1% line, is phenoxyethanol. Phenoxyethanol is probably the most common preservative in cosmetics. It will never be used above 1%. So if you see it on an ingredients list, you are going to know with certainty anything below that is less than 1%. So they are very sneaky with this ingredients list and that they put it at the very bottom of the ingredients list. So you don't really have a good way to gauge as a customer where the 1% line is. So now we're gonna talk about marketing. So like I said, I was very nervous when Desi was coming out with the skincare line because I'm a big fan of Desi. I would like to support any of her own businesses, her collaborations, but I also come from the perspective that I don't want customers to be misled, which seems to happen a lot with skincare products. After seeing the website, the Instagram page and what they talked about and how Desi spoke in her video about this product. I actually feel very good about the marketing of this product. Maybe a little bit of that is my bias towards her, but there are a few things that I actually really do appreciate in terms of how this product and brand was marketed. One thing that I really appreciated was nowhere in the website, the Instagram, her video, the packaging was the word clean being mentioned. Clean is seems to be the popular term for any skincare brand to use. Every skincare brand that comes out is always clean. Clean is a meaningless term. There is no legal definition of it. Some retailers have tried to define what this means. Most of the time, these banned ingredients on these clean lists, the science doesn't support why they're banning them or they're not even used in cosmetics. So that's why I appreciate her not using the word clean. And when you go to the about page, I'll show the picture up here of what exactly was said. But the sentiment is, is that she wants to share effective formulas with beautiful packaging. That kind of seems to be the mission statement of what kind of product she wants to put out there. And I hope she sticks with that. And I also appreciate in this sentiment, she also mentions chemists in particular and the chemists helping to maximize the efficiency of these products. So that does acknowledge the people who are putting the work into the formula. Her being an influencer and giving credit where credit is due to the people who helped make this formula a reality. I really appreciate that because a lot of times we'll see influencers claiming that they worked really hard on the formula and that they did the work and not acknowledging who they worked with. So that being said, she also has free from claims, which I, I'm not surprised by. This is gonna be common of every brand. They don't go into detail on the website as why these particular ingredients aren't in there or on in her video, she didn't go into it as well. So cruelty-free and vegan are personal choices that people make. I'm not gonna criticize that kind of free from claim, as well as gluten. I've mentioned in the past, I don't know how important gluten is to people who have a gluten intolerance. So gluten-free, also, if someone's allergic to gluten or is gluten intolerant, I don't know how significantly it would affect them in a skincare product. So again, not gonna harp on that claim. Fragrance fee as well. I personally don't mind fragrance, but a lot of people, especially in the skincare community, do not want fragrance in their product. That's fine. So now we go into paraben free. So I've mentioned parabens in the past, but parabens basically got a really bad rap. There was a study that came out that also got redacted afterwards. So this study basically got pulled back. 
but the damage had already been done. I'll link a video up above if you want to learn more about parabens and why I believe that parabens are safe. But most companies don't use them now anyway, so it doesn't really matter what I think. Every company seems to be paraben free nowadays. And then they also mentioned phthalates for those would be in fragrance. There's no fragrance in here anyway, so that's not really an issue to worry about. And also triclosan free. So this triclosan free I've been seeing a lot recently and I'm really confused why this is going in like on a free from list other than to bulk up the claims. Remember how earlier I said some of these ingredients aren't even used in cosmetics? So triclosan was commonly used as an antimicrobial ingredient in like hand soaps and stuff like that and in toothpastes as well. But it got banned in hand soap products in 2016. I can't find a product that is currently on the market that's not sold from a third party website like Amazon that contains triclosan. It was very prominent in Colgate products, but it's not in them anymore. It seems kind of weird to advertise as being triclosan free when triclosan's not being used. So one claim that she's made and that I heard Katie mention is that this is a non-sticky formula. So two of the ingredients in here that are gonna help this be non-sticky are gonna be dimethicone and the coconut alkanes. These are really good emollient ingredients or really good smoothing ingredients and those are gonna help this not have that tacky feeling to the skin. These two things largely have a smooth, soft texture to them. So that's gonna help alleviate the stickiness of what is typically found in vitamin C formulas. Piece of marketing we're gonna talk about is the consumer panel that they mentioned. This used the standard of 30 people, various skin types, ages, backgrounds, and gave them the product to test for two weeks blindly and then just got their feedback on the product after two weeks. These kind of self-evaluation customer panels are one of the cheaper and easier ways to get some numerical data to put on their packaging in their website that shows the effectiveness, I guess we would say, of their product. There are some brands that are doing other types of clinical studies in which there are measurements being taken by instrumentation. Brands know they don't need to go to that extent to sell the product, so they don't do it. So while these numbers are good numbers, it's at least nine out of 10 for all these responses, the statements that were put in these, almost all of them are not things that were concerns of what this product would do for me. I have to wonder if there were other statements that maybe ranked a little bit less after two weeks of use and they just excluded that from there. I don't know, but I think it was far more impressive when she showed the before and afters of her friend who used this product and her hyperpigmentation significantly improved. I think that was far more impressive. My first impressions of when I use this product, so instantaneously when you use this product, your skin definitely has a healthy glow to it. There are things in here like the coconut alkanes, the dimethicone, those are help making your skin feel soft, where there are also ingredients like glycerin, propendiol, these are all humectants that are drawing water to your skin. So when I put this on instantaneously, I just felt like my skin looked better. So there's that. I only used one pump because you know it's expensive. I'm trying to just use as little as possible. But the one pump was sufficient enough to cover my whole face. That's also something I find really positive. The texture feels really good. May I put makeup on over it today. My makeup went on fine. I even put on a glow lotion. I put on foundation over it. I put on a matte primer. So I tried the whole shabam today to see how it would work with my makeup and it worked perfectly fine. So, so far I'm liking how this makes my skin feel immediately after. We'll see if the vitamin C truly does give me long-term benefits. If not, I will hope that Desi makes a moisturizer with this kind of consistency. So that brings me to doing my full review. So I'll either do that for two weeks or a full month. Let me know down below which one you prefer. I will track the progress throughout that entire time so we can see if there's any noticeable improvement to my skin. And I will also be using the same products that I've been using recently so I'm not disrupting my skin in any major way. And in my full review, I'll also deep dive more into the different forms of vitamin C in here. Let me know if there's any other ingredients you wanna talk about. And if you learned something today, give this video a thumbs up. 
and make sure you click the subscribe button if you want to learn more about the science of makeup and skincare. With that, I will see you in my next video. Bye!